Hello students, this is Professor Sansom, and today we're going to talk about Experiment 5, which is an introduction to chemical reactions. In this lab, you'll be observing a variety of chemical reactions and using both your observations and your knowledge of types of reactions to infer what the products are. A few of the reactions will result in the formation and release of a gas. One way to identify the type of gas formed is by performing a glowing or burning splint test. A burning splint, as the name suggests, is on fire. A glowing splint was on fire but is blown out, leaving the glowing embers. These two tests can help you identify three gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. In each case, you'll tilt your test tube containing the unidentified gas and insert the glowing or burning end of your splint into the test tube. The table in your lab manual will help you identify the chemical based on what you observe. A glowing splint will reignite when exposed to oxygen gas because oxygen supports combustion. Occasionally you will hear a small pop as the splint reignites, but this is distinct from the burning splint test for hydrogen. A burning splint's flame will go out when exposed to carbon dioxide because it does not support combustion. A burning splint will cause a small explosion when exposed to hydrogen because hydrogen burns rapidly. Don't worry, in this lab it's a very small explosion and it will make a popping sound when you ha have that observation. So now I'm going to tell you about each of the different tests that you'll perform. The first test is burning a piece of magnesium ribbon. As you can see, this will create a very bright flame that can permanently damage your eyes if you look directly at it. So you have to look to the side or avoid looking directly at the flame. For the second part of this test, you'll be combining your magnesium product with water, so pay attention to whether the solid dissolves and also the pH of your solution. The second test will involve heating a test tube. To do this safely, you'll need to light the Bunsen burner. First, make sure that your long hair is tied back, you have no dangling clothing, and you've cleared the area of other objects that are flammable. As you light it, make sure that you light the match first before you turn on the gas and that you turn on the gas slowly so that you don't uh, put out the flame on your match. Also, remember when you turn off the flame to turn it off at the gas valve, not by blowing it out. This is to avoid having excess gas leak into the lab room. To heat your test tube, you'll use a test tube clamp and you'll hold the test tube at the tip of your flame and move the flame along the length of the test tube so it's not concentrated in just one spot. If it's in just one spot, it can cause the glass to shatter. Also, holding the test tube at a 45 degree angle will make the heating process easier. Make sure when you do this that the opening of the test tube isn't pointed at you or your lab partner, or anyone else. Once you can see gas beginning to form, you can use the same Bunsen burner to light a splint and perform a glowing splint test. And then you can heat the substance again to produce more gas and then perform a burning splint test. It's important to remember that if you have to do both of these tests, you have to produce more of the gas in between um, because it may have been consumed when you did the test. In the third test for this experiment, again, you'll have a glowing and burning splint test. And again, make sure that you do the reaction twice, once before the glowing splint and once before the burning splint. In this case where you're uh, decomposing hydrogen peroxide, it can bubble and overflow, so make sure that you add it slowly when you're adding it to the KI. In test four, you'll be using silver nitrate, which can stain your skin, so be careful when using it. This reaction also takes several minutes, so be patient and record your observations while you're waiting. In the fifth test, you'll combine solid zinc with hydrochloric acid in a dry test tube. Remember the hydrochloric acid is corrosive, so be careful when you're handling it. And uh, as soon as you've combined the reagents, you're going to place another test tube upside down over the first test tube. Uh, you'll do this in order to capture the gas that's produced in the reaction. So hold it at the joint where the two test tubes meet to make sure that no gas is escaping. And then uh, make sure you're using a test tube clamp. Hold the inverted test tube, that top test tube, uh, off to the side and do a burning splint test, as you can see in the video. It's important that you're not holding the test tube itself, um, but rather holding the test tube clamp, uh, because it, it may be hot when this reaction happens. Your final test will involve a glowing splint test, and you'll use the same technique that you did in the earlier tests in order to do that. 
and you should be ready now to perform experiment number five. Good luck.